Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. So we're here, it's my interview with the showrunner Marja Lewis Ryan and there's just a few little things I wanted to say before we get started. So one, as always, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any content. And two, there is no video side to this because it was a phone call. So I've tried to like put in, you know, clips and stuff. I have to be careful with the clips because the copyright guards will smite me where I stand. So I hope that you guys are understanding about that. And two, I am not a journalist. I know I'm not a journalist. And most of the questions came from either me, my subscribers, my patrons. And I was limited on time, like Marsha and the originally was like, oh, you know, I'll give you 15, 20 minutes. And then we ended up talking for like over half an hour. So it was really, really awesome of her to give me any of her time because I don't know many showrunners who would do this. So I was honestly just blown away that she agreed to this. And I hope that you guys enjoy the questions that I asked because there's only so many I can get across in that time. And you know, especially when a lot of our complaints about the media and the press that surround the show is usually the mainstream like heterosexual world. So I think that most of the time when people are interviewing like cast or crew, they're interviewing them after only seeing maybe an episode or two. So I wanted to ask questions like really more specific to things that I've seen people asking in our community and also that are more overarching of the whole season or even the entire like you know two series because you're not going to get that in the mainstream media because there's not many people working in the mainstream media who are passionate about this show because it's such a niche queer show so we got into that a little bit in the in the interview so also, just some things to remember. Again, like this is an unusual situation for me. Yes, I used to work on sets and things like that, but being on a phone call with someone you greatly admire who runs your favorite television show that changed your life, like it's a bit nerve wracking. So excuse me if I sound a bit like an idiot, <laughs> but also I greatly praise the show and Marsha because I know some people are really like, I don't know, surprised or like gotcha by this information when they try and reveal it. But yes, I really like the L word and I really like Generation Q. I wouldn't be here doing this if I didn't because no one in their right mind would dedicate the amount of time that I dedicate to this channel doing research for videos, filming, editing, like replying to comments, doing all the back end stuff, thumbnails, the millions of things that go into this channel that people don't think about. And unless you literally are in the hundred thousand or more of subscribers, it's it's not what people think it is. So this is a passion project, like a thousand percent. And this was my one opportunity to have like a phone call and, and have like an open dialogue, not like messaging with Marsha. So of course I'm gonna say how much the show means to me and how much I like it. All right, just one other thing to mention. I kind of went back and forth about whether to leave in like our, hey, how are you and all this stuff. And I did clip like the very, very end and the very, very beginning just because it's like the call patching through and like just literally saying hi. But I felt as though if it was me watching this and someone that I liked, like a YouTuber that I liked was interviewing the showrunner of a show I liked, like I'd want to hear everything if possible. So I decided to leave it in and pretty much, I mean, this is like 95% 
unedited and exactly what what we said to each other so I I just again like I'm so thankful and and I think that like Marsha was so kind and giving of her time so I really hope you guys enjoy it. So I really hope you guys enjoy the interview. I would love to know what you thought down in the comment section so let me know and without any further ado roll the interview. Hi. Hey Ashley how are you? Good how are you? Good it's nice to talk to you. No thank you so much for talking to me that I like appreciate it so so much. Yeah, well, we appreciate your fandom. Oh, thanks. I'm well, serious. No, it means thanks. a lot. It's cool, you know? I mean, like, it's, it, it really is. It's, like, the whole reason we make the show. So I'm, I'm happy to talk to you. Oh, thanks so much. I guess the, the first thing is, like, oh, my God, how many cliffhangers did you give us? <laughs> <laughs> I know, they better give us a third season. I mean, otherwise we're all going to be really sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I um, I was talking to Kelsey from Showtime the other day, and I'm like, every day, like, have you heard anything? Have you heard anything? <laughs> so I really hope that, that you guys get another one. Thank you. Yeah, so I guess I was just going to go go back a little bit and talk about, like, when you started out writing season two, did you know that you were going to end up here, like, as far back as season one, or was it right from the, the beginning that you were, you knew exactly in your head, like, where you were going? So, we do, hmm, it's a good question. I, I arc out the characters by season. Um, I do listen to and watch for, like, what the fans respond to. Mm-hmm. But I can only really do it between seasons because you know I get you know I get all these comments now of like why aren't Jeannie in the finale more and it's like <laughs> to be honest like we don't really know what the fans are gonna like I didn't like I write it for all of you but like I don't really know what you're gonna respond to like all I yeah. can do is just like try to tell decent stories mm-hmm. and hope that you glom on to somebody or or multiple somebodies and but I just never know what that's gonna be. Yeah, I I, I kind of um, was was yeah. getting at that like in in my um, review today because I was saying like, you know, I'm sure that you, like you didn't know how popular they would be. Obviously, because I can see it with my own like on a minuscule scale, like my own views. But Danny and Gigi has just been like so crazy yeah. popular. Like everyone is absolutely loving them. Yeah, and like Tess and Shane, like yeah, I mean. I mean as a, as a director, you do get, like, vibes off of people. Like, you can tell that, like, char- you know, characters are working well together. You can tell as a writer when stories are coming easily or when it's hard to find. Like, there are some indications. But I didn't know if people were going to like Micah and Maribel together. I didn't mm-hmm. know if people were going to – like, I don't know for sure when I start off. So, yeah, I write them season by season, and then I kind of, like – make the changes based on like who I think they've become and I think that the time between seasons is when I get to like really think about like how have they changed and where do I want to see them go um and so I really hope I get a third season to like I have more story in me yeah I, I mean like a character like Gigi I mean she's like my personal favorite from from Gen Q and it's just so crazy going back to like the first season and she was like a smaller character as as Nat's ex wife, and now, you know, absolutely far and away, such a such a popular character. Yeah, but is that more like when you meet the actor, or is it just like the way the stories develop? Yeah, I think it's both. I mean, and I think it's about like chemistry, and I think it's about opportunity. I mean, uh, getting to know Stephana. Um, was helpful. She has a really interesting like life story that we were able to kind of pull on, and also just like I think I told the story a bunch, but I when we first made the show, I went and watched the pilot in one of these like really crowded <laughs> lesbian oh, spots cool. <laughs> in LA that have like popped up, and we all went like we went and, and we sat in the back, and it's like 2019, so, like pre pandemic, <laughs> and. When Gigi came on screen and spoke in Farsi, all of these, like, Persian L.A. lesbians are, like, screaming at the screen. And I was like, I knew it. <laughs> like, I, I knew you were here. 
and because because I live in LA and like mm-hmm. I there's a huge Persian community here and I was like I, I think this is real. Um, let's just let's just drop her, let's just drop this in. Like let's just see like like what this character can do for for like the little that she has. Like I just try to like make something of it. But then once that happened, and then once I realized that Arian also spoke Farsi, I was like, we have to get these two people together in a scene. Like, oh, yeah. We yeah. need to see this. <laughs> It's, because you've never seen it before, isn't that? Cool? No, that that's like, what's so crazy. Right there, <laughs> that's what's so crazy. Yeah. Like I know that's really the dirt. There's not enough queer content. There really still oh. isn't. Like people think that there's a lot of it, and like we're done. But like we don't have that library yet. Like this happens every time a queer person makes a queer story. Mm-hmm. It's brand new, <laughs> and like oh yeah, there's so much that hasn't that hasn't been tapped into. And like this show is so small. It's one show. Yeah. Um, so I can't do everything, but like <laughs> once in a while I get to do something that's like really special, and that was really special to me. Yeah. So like stories come out of lots of things. You know, it comes out of like a, a really deep like need for representation. It comes mm-hmm. out of like natural chemistry be- among friends behind the scenes. It comes out in lots of ways, but I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm paying attention. <laughs> I know, I definitely know that. I, I just, like you're saying about the Persian community, you know, it's not something I ever really thought of as myself, but now I, I have this like little band of, of Persian lesbians that are just like, every week they're like, this is what they said this week, you know, like translating it for me. And this is one question that I, I think I know the answer, but is there a reason that you don't show the subtitles? What do you think the reason is? I think it's because you're from, like, a play background, and that's normally, you wouldn't you, have to. Okay. You want to know why? <laughs> you're, you're, you're not correct. It's because okay. that call that that group of Persians made to you that's telling you what she said. Okay, this is what I thought originally. Persian, <laughs> that is Persian lesbians telling their story. Okay, that was my original well, thought, and then I went now. off. Okay, cool. That's cool. the idea. Is that yes. You need them, and they don't need you. They're in the know. It's their story. It's for them. And, like, I don't ever, like, put anything in the in those scenes that, like, you would need to know in order yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. understand the next scene. Like, it's mm-hmm. not that kind of information, but it, it's for them. And, like, I do the same thing with, like, you know, Spanish speaking, which is, like, also mm-hmm. really fun because something did happen in that Michael Maribel scene in episode nine. And I knew that my Spanish-speaking audience would hear it. And yeah. I've gotten lots of blog posts about it. It's been very fun fun to have them yell at me and <laughs> wonder out loud what's happening. Um, I, uh, yeah, I think it's really cool. I think, I think it's just, like, another way of trying to, like, make it feel like it really is for us, by us. Yeah, and like, oh, absolutely. What means is that, like, we look like all kinds of things and we speak all kinds of languages. And, like, we need each other to, like, maintain this thing. Um, I know subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> no subtitles. No, I, that's what I was thinking originally. I was like, maybe it's, you know. Exactly. It's like white people. You gotta fucking think. You gotta think about it for a second, you know? Oh, God, the it's white okay. people. Your brain's not gonna explode. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, just trying to change some things. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Just like a really generic uh, question, like, is there, what's your favorite scene this this season that you either written, directed? Well, I, I have a lot of answers to that question. I, I'll give you a few answers. Okay. One is like really, truly, like writing that scene in Farsi was like uh, really cool. Oh, cool. Um, uh, really and truly, like no, knowing that we were going to go make that scene between Mike and Maribel in episode five where they had sex for the first time oh, yes. was like really fucking cool. You know, I was like, this is something, you know, anytime we sort of like hit those moments on the show where we're like, Ooh, we are doing something. Yeah. Today. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, like this is like new ground. Like this is exciting. Like that, that's so fun for me. Um, but truly I wrote episode six with, um, my writer's assistant mm-hmm. and with the staff writer of the show. And they, mostly the writer's assistant by the time we were in production and I were like working hand in hand and that karaoke episode, <laughs> like, I knew 
I knew exactly what we were doing, you know? Yeah. Like, like I knew how joyful it was and like, I knew how badly we needed to feel that feeling. Yeah. And, um, my director shadow from season one directed that episode and like just the whole thing just like really works. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. I I feel like all, like, we were all saying when, when we were talking about the episode, that we were just, like, all Jacqueline Tobani in that moment, where she's just sitting there, like, so happy. <laughs> uh, it was, it was great. Yeah. Okay, well, I have, I have to ask, I have to ask this, because otherwise we'll be murdered, but <laughs> the ending with yeah. Bet and Tina. <laughs> yeah. I'll be murdered. Yeah, oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was this the plan, like, or was it just when Laurel Holloman's schedule opened up, or... Uh, tell me everything. <laughs> um, was it the plan? So... I, I, I think that the, the ending is, like, very open-ended. Yes, yes, yes. But yeah. was it, I mean, I guess... Because, obviously, like, it was such a surprise last season that she came back, like, did you always think in her head, oh, if I, if I get her back, you know, in season two, am I always, like, moving in this, in this direction? And do you, well, you probably can't really answer this, but do you, <laughs> are you... So far, I don't think I can answer any of it. I'll try to find a piece of it that I can answer. Okay, okay. <laughs> Are you are you are you trying are you trying are you trying to find out like like did I always think that Bet and Tipple would get back together? But like I balk at the question because that's not necessarily what I'm saying happens. I don't think that's what happens in episode ten. I yeah, think that like yeah. you end on the choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. He hasn't made the choice yet. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. That was, I I didn't think so. <laughs> What like what's the deal? Are we are we moving in this direction? Are we just you yeah? Know? You want to know? You want to know? Like, is this real or not? But I'm telling you, like, I can't answer that question. That's a crazy question. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm okay. You. What do you think? I, I need to ask. I need to ask. We're in a place right now where where what do you think happens? Like, yeah. What, where do you think these characters are going? I think the the bets all like always going to want Tina to show up on her doorstep and because Tina has the, I don't know, I, I think the decision's always made for Bat, but it depends what Tina's there for. Like, she could be there giving Bat a restraining order for all I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good pitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go with that. I mean, I think, I think all of those pitches are on the table. I mean, I, I will say, like, I love working with Laurel. I love working with Rosie O'Donnell. I love the scenes where the three of them are in them together. One of my like favorite scenes directing was when they were in the kitchen Ugh. in that in the first episode. <laughs> so fun. Just like Carrie saying that the knife isn't sharp enough. Like I mean all of it. It was just like so fun. It you know, Rosie O'Donnell's like hero of mine. Uh, like, I was gonna so ask what, what it's like with her. Feel like, just feel like I, I was able to like work with somebody who changed my life, you know, and like <laughs> she knows it too. You know, anytime she sees, like, a 30-something lesbian come here, she knows, you know? She knows what they're going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if I um, saw her, that's exactly what I would like, do, too. But it is. It's, like, it's super, yeah, it's super meta, you know? It's, like, I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't be here without her, and now she's on my show. You know, it's, like, pretty awesome. On my show, she's, like, on a show that raised me, you know, it's, like, it's a lot. It's, like, it's so fun. Or then on cat, same thing. I mean, it's, like, having these people on the show is, so fun it's so fun for the cast too I, I i like loved all that this season like especially when rosie and alice have that like conversation and then it like yeah, you said yeah, the show so <laughs> <So funny. laughs> yeah it's like so good alicia, alicia will tell you that alicia was like you have to write a scene where rosie comes up to me and talks to me about being a talk show <laughs> <laughs> and i was like sure <laughs> so we did Oh god, I love that. Yeah, it's really funny. I mean, it's really joyful. Is there anyone uh, from the original, or even just like the real world, that you would would be like your dream get to be on the show? Oh my god, I have so many. <laughs> there are so many. Like my dream was always that like the show is just a place where like queer people come to play. You know, like 
I would love for Elliot Page to be on the show. Like, I would love for oh, Demi yeah. to stop by. Like, where's Kaylani? You know what I mean? What's she <laughs> up to? Like, I just feel like I just feel like there's like lots of like big names of like young people people that like are you know out there and like they have clear messages and like I want them on this show. Like, I that's like what. I always thought the show would be Rachel Maddow, same thing. Uh, We're always yeah. talking about Rachel Maddow. <laughs> Margaret Cho. Like, there's, like, legends and there's, like, new people. And, like, I would love for them to come play on stage. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, so awesome. I hope that you can get some of them. That would be awesome. I don't know. Yeah. Well, if um, Alice ever wants to go up against, like, a young YouTuber or something, you know, you can always hit me up yeah. anytime. <laughs> <laughs> thank you i will keep that in mind yeah keep that in mind just to talk a bit more about danny and Gigi, ari and and sepida seem like r really good friends and stuff was that relationship on the show born out of seeing their chemistry or was it just something that you decided oh we're gonna test this because of like the persian thing and or a bit of both yeah, yeah. I mean, like, the representation piece was huge. I think their chemistry off screen definitely helped us see them, like, anew. Um, the other thing, too, that, like, um, played into the relationships in season two was COVID. Oh, um, yeah. We really couldn't have people coming in and out. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, the idea of, like, having a character like Zepeda, who that could, I mean, like Gigi, that can, like, actually, like, move through spaces... So, like, connect these characters and, like, create some drama is, like, always really helpful on a show like this. Yeah, that um, makes sense. So, you know, we, we, we call them our utility players. It's when they're single, basically, and they can, like, bump about. Utility players. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, last Finley was our utility player in season one. You remember she, like, slept with, like, Tess and Sophie and mm -hmm. uh, the priest. And, you know, like, I mean, like, she, you know, she was just, she was just somebody that we could, like, move through spaces. Um, she, like, worked for Alice, she worked for Shane, she lived with Sophie Danny, you know, like, she she was somebody that could, like, bump around. We could never seem to get her and Beth together, <laughs> but, <laughs> but but we have joked about it. Oh, my God. Um, I, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, like, some some of it came out of that. Some of it just came out of, like, how do we maintain just these nine series regulars and, like, mm -hmm. not involve any other guest stars because we didn't have the bandwidth really to do that because of the, you know, COVID shooting restrictions that were going on at the time. Yeah. And and just to touch on Finley um, quickly, the, the storyline with her and obviously like having an addiction and things like that. Did you feel as though that was quite important to tell because of like the LGBTQ community having such a high prevalence of of substance abuse or was I it? I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that, that is like a lot of, a lot of like those kinds of stories that like like you know like Angie's you know biological mm -hmm. donor and you know just these kinds of like queer adjacent or like queer affiliated stories we do try to pick and choose moments inside of those spaces so that because we are a queer show and we want to be so we want to feel like we're living in the same world but like uh, people in the real, like the real world. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, addiction is very close to me. I've been on, you know, all sides of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I really <laughs> loved that. I loved writing that storyline and I, I loved di directing Jack in the finale. It oh yeah, fun. she's brilliant. I mean, fun is not the right word. Satisfying. Satisfying experience. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, she's brilliant. And, yeah. uh, you know, this season with like you said, Micah and Maribel and Tess and Shane and all these these new couples, do you have, like, a, f a favorite couple from this season that you just thought they were? I mean, no. I, I, I'm I really happy that the audience liked, liked everyone. You know, mm -hmm. I, the one couple that, like, I mean, I know, I know it's always going to be hard for the lesbians to get on board with Tom, but like, I love writing for Tom and Alice. Like, I love shooting the scenes. He's just like really joyful, um, and like in some way, like makes a lot of sense for her. Like, always did to me. Like, it does seem like an alternative life that like Alice could live. Um, that he was like prepared to offer her. 
I, uh, and I liked everybody. I loved working with Vanessa Williams. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think Donald Faison too, like, there's very few people who I think could play that and, and get, like, I, I've seen, like, a lot of the the younger people who come to my channel are, like, really, really on board with Alice and Tom. That was, that was something that I really, uh, like, think that the original show, like, in addition to, like, trans representation mm -hmm. and, like, you know, being super white, like, the original show also does, did not do the our bisexual <laughs> anything, you know? No. And it was sort of like this old old school view of bisexuality that I was just like, eager to just like break out from a little bit. And like mm -hmm. it, and like we were trying to tell a slightly nuanced story of like it's not a perfect world. Like she still runs into these issues like at work and stuff like that. But like I wanted to tell a story where like by and large the problem isn't that he's a man. The problem is that, you know, she's afraid of commitment and she always has been and, you know, she can't really be vulnerable. Like, you know, those are her problems. So I, I, I think we kind of did that and like he was just a blast. He was <laughs> so fun. He loved working on our set, you know, like he really got like what the show is about, like he would come into work and be like, I told my wife that there's just women everywhere on this set. Like, women on a self bed in my life. <laughs> and I was like, cool. You know, like, I mean, he like got it. He like understood like what we were doing. And, um, uh, yeah, he was fun. Really fun. And I'm glad the children like him. We like him too. We think he's Murray, so, you know? Yeah, yeah. The, um, a lot. Fun. Pretty, pretty popular. Like, Yeah. Um, and I, I know your time is very limited, so do you, did you have a favorite episode this season that you did? I mean, yeah, I think, I think episode six is my favorite. I think episode six is my favorite from both seasons, you know? I mean, of, of all 18 episodes, episode six is my favorite. Nice, nice. It means a lot to me. Oh, I think that was my favorite this season too. I know I've run a little bit over, but thank you so much for your time, Raja. I really, really appreciate it so much. Um, oh, thank thank you for covering the show. Thank you for watching it. Thanks for being a fan. And, you know, yeah. we really do exist for you and for everybody in our community. And I know that we're all really mean to each other sometimes, but I'm trying to make that uncool. <laughs> no. I, um, I, I really, really appreciate it. And I just, you know, I, I think what you're doing with the show is absolutely amazing and honestly like hats off to you your everything about this season has just been absolutely brilliant and I really like I'm obviously I'm, I'm trying to write myself at the moment getting back into it so I'm really trying to take note and appreciate <laughs> everything that that you're doing and thank you so much again for your time and and Hi and good luck to everyone and I have absolutely everything crossed for you for season three. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have fun writing. Thanks. Take care. Bye Marsha. Bye bye. Bye.